Okay, time for another how-to, I think. This one is on something you guys all kind of commented on on my last how-to, which was how to free up your other storage on your iPhone. Now, during that video, I at some point asked you to create a backup to iCloud in order for us to reset the phone and not lose everything on it. But some of you mentioned that you couldn't because your iCloud storage was full and so you were in a bit of a catch-22. So, in this video, let's show how to free up your iCloud storage. Now, I already did a video a while back that still works for freeing up the actual storage on your iPhone. And then I did one on how to clear that mysterious other storage that I just mentioned. So I'll link to both of those. If those are your issues, you can check those out below. For this video though, we're clearing the iCloud storage, which isn't on your phone at all, really. Instead, your iCloud storage is the cloud storage that Apple gives you on their servers, similar to how Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive work. At the time of making this video here in the US, Apple gives you five gigs of storage for iCloud for free, and you can pay an extra 99 cents a month to get 50 gigs, 200 gigs for $3 a month, and two terabytes for $10 a month. Now you can, of course, just pay that if it's not a big deal to you, and it'll just give you extra storage, and you can use that to do the backup or whatever it is you're trying to do right now. And frankly, it's exactly what Apple would want you to do because they're actually trying to get more and more revenue from reoccurring services instead of just hardware nowadays. But if you're like me and you don't wanna pay for something that you don't feel like you need to, and almost maybe a little bit of on principle matter of it as well, but also just wanna make sure that this does not keep growing and growing, which it tends to do, uh, there are a few things you can do to limit your iCloud storage. So first, let's check to make sure the iCloud storage is our actual issue by going to settings, tapping on your name, and then tapping on iCloud. Now at the top of this, you'll see a bar graph that'll let you know how much storage you have and which categories of things are using that storage. If you're getting close to the end of that bar, it's time to clear things up. Now in this video, I'm gonna go through a bunch of different ways to clear all the various categories. You can pick and choose which ones you really wanna do, or you can do them all if you feel like it. I would suggest though looking at that graph and then determining which of those categories are the most important to you as in they're taking up the most space. Start with those and then you can work your way around the list as needed. Now first up, let's start with iMessage and email. Now generally your messages don't take up a lot of room on their own, but the thing is is that iCloud by default also saves every attachment you've ever received by email as well as photos, GIFs, videos, and the like through iMessage, and that can over time really start to add up. So you can go back into settings, tap on your name, tap on iCloud and then see that bar graph and see if messages and or mail are taking up a lot of space first. If so, then you can either individually go through your iMessage threads by tapping on the person's name at the top, then tapping info, then tapping all photos, and then tap select and tap on the images and videos that you don't need and you can tap delete to remove all of them at once. You can then repeat this with as many threads as you need. Alternatively, I actually have my iMessage delete things automatically after 30 days, and it saves some of that iCloud storage, but it also saves some device storage as well. To do that, you can go to settings, then messages, and scroll down to keep messages, and then select 30 days, or even a year if you prefer, instead of the default forever. For email, unfortunately, there's no quick way to remove things from iCloud like with messages, but a good way to clear a bunch of it at once is to just open the mail app, tap on mailboxes, and then all mail if there's an option for that. Next, tap on the filter icon at the bottom left and then tap on filtered by, uncheck everything in here if it's checked, and then turn on only mail with attachments. Now this will give you a list of all the emails you've ever sent from that account and received that had attachments and therefore probably are taking up more space on iCloud than ones without them. You can then tap edit at the top right and select the ones that you don't need and tap trash to clear them out. You'll then have to go back to mailboxes and go to the trash and then clear the trash to make sure that they're truly gone. Next, this one can take up a lot depending on whether you use it or not. It's kind of self-explanatory, but honestly, I forgot that I had tons of things in here from very, very long ago. So it's worth just checking on. So firstly, just like with messages and email, let's see how big of an impact this is even gonna have by going to settings, tapping on your name, tapping on iCloud, and seeing in that bar graph if documents are taking up a lot of space. If so, let's open the Files app on the phone, then tap on Browse, then iCloud Drive. The next step is to just go through these files and folders, tap select at the top right and select whichever ones you wanna get rid of, and then tapping the trash can icon at the bottom to delete them and of course freeing up storage. Okay, now for one of the biggest culprits of iCloud storage as well as storage just on your device in general, photos and videos. And your iPhone stores photos and videos in one of two ways. Firstly, is the fact that whenever you do a backup of your phone, so long as photos is enabled for backup in settings, 
your name, iCloud, manage storage, backups, this iPhone, and you see the toggle there for photos is on, whenever you backup and restore your device from iCloud, your photos and videos will always just come back. The other way is iCloud Photos. Confusing, I know. But this is what allows you to instantly see all of your photos and videos across all of the devices you are logged into with the same iCloud account and acts more as an automatic syncing of your photos and videos instead of just doing it each time you back up and restore. Now, either of these options come at the cost of iCloud storage being used up though. So as you take more photos and even from every device you have attached to this iCloud account, you'll eat away at that storage limit. Now, personally, I turn both of these off and I just use a completely free and unlimited service like Google Photos instead. Now, if you prefer to use iCloud Photos, that's fine, of course, and you can just skip this part, but it will fill up more and more over time as you take more photos, so just keep that in mind. If you want to avoid that, Google Photos works in a similar way by allowing you to upload all of your photos, and then just like with iCloud Photo, they're always backed up and available across any other device with Google Photos installed on it and on a computer at photos.google.com. So to do this, simply download Google Photos from the App Store and then open it. Log in or sign up for an account, and when going through the setup process, just make sure to turn on automatic backups in high quality, which is the free option, which limits photos to 16 megapixels, which is larger than any iPhone photos anyway, so you're good to go. Now, I also select to do this over data and not just Wi-Fi, as I have an unlimited data plan, but if you're worried about overages, then leave this off. Then, leave this open on this screen and plugged in and connected to Wi-Fi if possible, and let it run. This will take a while to back up all of your photos and videos on the first go. And if you close the app, it pauses. So it's best to just leave it open for this initial backup at least. Now, once it's done, you can tap on your profile at the top right and tap on however many number of items have been safely backed up and then tap delete that number of items. And it'll automatically delete all the photos and videos on the device that it knows are already backed up to Google Photos. You can confirm this too if you don't trust it by going to photos.google.com in any browser and logging in with the same account and you should see all your photos and videos there. Now, once it does that though, there is another step that iOS makes you do to truly remove the photos and free up the storage. You need to open the normal photos app and then tap on albums at the very bottom recently deleted and then tap select then delete all to permanently delete them and actually free up the storage. Now, you can then go to settings, your name, iCloud, tap on photos under the chart and turn off iCloud photo library. Then go to settings, your name, iCloud, manage storage, backups, tap on this iPhone in there and turn off photos in there as well. And now your photos and videos won't take up any iCloud storage at all. And lastly, let's take a look at the other large culprit of iCloud storage, your backups. To start, we'll simply look at all the different apps that are using iCloud backup and decide if there are any in there that we don't really need to be using. So go to settings, tap on your name, tap on iCloud again, but now tap on manage storage and then backups. Then tap on the one that says this iPhone. In here, you'll see a list of all of the apps that are using iCloud for their backups. Starting from the top, as it should be listed in order of the apps using the most storage, go through these and turn off the backup for apps that you don't use very often or don't really need to be backed up. Next, let's take a look at the other backups that we have. Every Apple device that is signed into the same iCloud account that you have backups turned on will put their entire backup into this same shared storage. So one thing good to check in here, every now and then at least, is to just see if there are any backups for older devices that you no longer use or maybe even have. Like, I sold this iPad. I don't need the backup anymore, for example. Now, once you identify those, you can then tap on them and tap delete to remove that backup. And just a reminder, you'll know which backup is for your current phone because it will say this iPhone on it. Speaking of that though, now that we're done with everything in this video, we're going to immediately perform a new backup by going to settings, tapping on your name, iCloud, scrolling down and tapping on iCloud backup, then backup now, and then continue. Now this new backup, depending on how many of the things in this video you actually did, should be a lot smaller than the original one. And hopefully after all, or at least some of these steps, you're using a lot less iCloud storage. Let me know what you guys think. If this helped you out, if you uh, need help with something else, let me know in the comments below. I'll see if I can get to it. Um, otherwise though, check out the rest of the channel. I do a kind of a vlog-like review series called Real World Tests that are kind of fun and I'm also kind of travel involved in that and just kind of experimenting with that. You guys seem to enjoy it though, but if you're new here, go check that out. Also, I do a series called Decoder, which is my tech explainer series. Check that out as well. If you like what you see on there, please subscribe and ding the bell next to subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.